In this video, we're going to be looking at the different ways you can structure your Redux project. And to do that, we're going to be using a pretty basic application. Uh, it's just a counter, and we're keeping track of the count in Redux. Now, before we get into it, let's quickly look at the different parts to a Redux application, just to refresh your memory. We have the configure store. No matter what we do, this is going to stay constant in any design structure powder that we have. It's pretty much the place where you apply any middleware as you want to your Redux, and you um, combine all your different stores and reducers together to get one store that you can just export um, and actually use within your index through what is known as a provider. Um, secondly, we have our actions. These are the things that the user actually, or that your components will actually be dispatching in order to perform some action in your reducer. We have constants. This isn't always the case with most uh, with a lot of Redux applications, but if you're building a big web app, uh, most industry standards uh, recommend that you use uh, constants for your action names. So. Um, and something having an action name that's just increment and you know using that name within your reducer and using that name within your action as just a string you make it a constant and import it and use it within your action and reducers and this helps avoid a lot of typos and it sort of speeds uh, things up. I've, I've hit a lot of errors, a, a lot, I've spent a lot of time and wasted a lot of time on silly errors where I misspelt an action name and I couldn't figure out what was going on. And the last thing we have are reducers. And this is where all the logic in your, uh, in Redux really gets performed. And usually you'll have a different one of each of these components other than your configure store, um, for every single quote reducer that you have. Um, and your reducers are usually segmented into the different types of components you have. So if we have a counter component, we would want to put all the reducer actions for that counter within the counter reducer. Um, if a part of the same app, we also have, let's say, a team functionality, we would want to put our team or our user functionality in a separate reducer. We want to uh, make sure everything is decomposed. And I'm going to be showing you two main methods, uh, two main structures that are industry standard, and I'm going to go over the pros and cons of both of them. So the first one we're going to look at is pretty much just having a separate folder for each one of these, uh, each one of these React, uh, Redux components. So you'll see here, I have my file structure. Um, I have my components in one uh, place. And if I go into Redux, you'll see I have a folder for both, for all three actions, uh, constants, and reducers. And over here, we have our configure store. Um, and like I said before, if we want to apply certain middlewares, we can, we combine it all, and then we export it. And you'll see here this structure uh, for our actions. Um, we have a counter file in our actions, which contains all the actions for our counter reducer. We have a constants file uh, folder, and within that constants folder, we have our counter file, which has all the actions for our counter. And we obviously have our reducer folder with another counter.js in there that actually has the entire um, Redux uh, reducer logic in here, so for incrementing. And the pros of this is everything is very organized, Whenever it, and it's very streamlined. It's in the sense that whenever I need to add a new action, I come over here to counter. Let's say I wanted to add a decrement. I would export const decrement. I would create the action name first. I would then go to our action. And then I would, so I would make the actual action itself. So decrement. which would also in turn import it from our counter. Oops. And then I would come over to the reducer. I would make a new case for our decrement. And I would actually write the logic for it. Oops. So count would be equal to state dot count minus one. And then if I wanted to create a button, let's go to our counter component. I would just simply have our button here, call it decrement. And instead of dispatching this increment, we're going to dispatch decrement from our action. It'll auto import, and here we go. If I increment it, it'll add by one, and if I decrement it, it'll minus it by one. And that's how you add new actions um, within the same reducer. Now, the con, one of the biggest cons about this type of structure is that the more uh, complex your application is, 
um, and the bigger it becomes and the more reducers you have, it adds a lot of files. If you think about it, for every single reducer, uh, you're adding three files into your directory and it can get really messy and it's hard um, to keep track of things when you're doing really complex logic because you have sort of things all over the place. If something goes wrong, um, you have to first make sure that your action is fine. So if you're passing in variables, for example, it can get a bit tricky to keep track of all the variables um, that are being passed into your action. Are they being passed in correctly? Um, did you name all the variables correctly? Um, and if not, you would have to go and start troubleshooting in the reducer. And it can get uh, really, really complex really fast. And another big con about this um, that I found was if you're also using a third party library like Redux Saga to make your API requests, you are going to really, 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 really um, just have a mess of all your files everywhere. So, for example, for Redux Saga, you would need to declare an action, or sorry, you would need to declare your of. Uh, uh, your action name as a constant. You would have to then declare the action. You would then have to go in your Saga listener, uh, import both of those in there. Um, and then whenever your Saga finishes, you would call another action, which you would then have to add into the actions and constants um, as well. And it just gets really messy when you're just going from file to file to file to file. And it's really hard to keep track of what you've already done and what you have to do, especially with bigger applications. Um, so that's probably, in my opinion, one of the biggest cons of using this type of design pattern. So let's quickly now uh, go on to the second design pattern, which is called the ducks method. The ducks method was created a couple years ago, and it was made by this cool guy named Eric Ras Ram Rasmussen. I apologize for butchering your name. Um, and pretty much the way it works is you pretty much all of these different things other than your configure store you merge them into one file for each reducer and that one file that you merge them all together in is known as a duck um, and as you can see here here is my duck for the counter application at the top we are describing what our uh, action name is so that was the same as our constants file uh, previously we have our initial state and our actual reducer logic, which previously was done by our reducer file. And at the very bottom, we are exporting our action so our components can use it. Um, and pretty much it's as simple as that. For every single reducer you have, everything is in a simple file. Now there are a couple of different rules that you want to that you want to keep in mind when using this pattern. Uh, the first rule is obviously your default export must always be your actual reducer. Um, your actions always have to be exported as non-default. You have to, and this is a really actually cool thing that I didn't touch upon when I was talking about the old method, your action names are actually this sort of weird long thing, and let me explain. So previously, let's say for example I had a count reducer, and let's say I had like another count reducer for another thing. Both of those things, their action names would both be known as uh, increment. Um, if, if they both had an increment function. And that wouldn't be good because in Redux, what happens is when you dispatch an action, it looks at the action, it takes all of your action types and it holds it in one global place. So you can't have two actions uh, with the same name. So you would run into a lot of errors and you would have to sort of de uh, describe the difference between the two, especially if you had uh, similar reducers. So the way we overcome that is by having a naming system that is completely unique to each reducer. Um, and it even goes so far to have it completely unique to each project. Um, so for example, the naming scheme is whatever the project name of your project is, slash your reducer name, and then slash the actual action name. And this is a really good system to keep things nice and organized and make sure there's no mix-ups, especially when you have a really big project. Um, so that's the third rule. And the fourth rule is that you can, you can export um, you, you can export these action names uh, if something external needs it. For example, if you're using Redux Saga, um, action names will become usable and you can export them. And that's the guideline that we have here. Now let's go through how easy it is uh, to, add, to add on an additional um, functionality, like for example, the decrement again in this system. We would create our action name, so const decrement is equal to and then project name slash counter slash decrement. We would then create our action. So I can just go ahead and 
call this decrement and then make the type decrement and then we can just simply um, add uh, the use case into our actual reducer and that is it and now if I go back to our counter and I uncomment the decrement code and I add decrement back in here you will see that we are able to uh, get it back again and um, as you saw it was a really a lot more streamlined it was a lot faster it feels a lot more organized um, and that's pretty much the pro of this if you had to make another reducer all you would do is create like the second reducer dot uh, JS and you would have everything inside of there inside of one duck um, and it keeps your code nice and tightly uh, nice and tightly organized um, you don't have files all over the place it makes it really simple when you're using third-party libraries one of the downfalls of this is if you have a really 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 complex uh, reducer your file might be really long especially if there are a lot of actions and each action performs something um, something very specific if that's the case um, I would recommend looking into maybe breaking down the reducer your reducer into two separate reducers um, especially if things get that long so say for example if you have a user reducer and you're doing all kinds of stuff uh, with the user um, in your reducer uh, and it's getting really long you might want to consider breaking down the reducers into two separate ones like for example user um, let's say for example if it's like an education site like user grading and that would be one reducer and user um, projects user courses user lectures um, breaking your reducer down like that um, I personally favor the ducks method I think it's really clean uh, it's a lot faster to code with um, and and it gets really it it feels a lot more streamlined than uh, the previous file structure. And yeah, um, let me know if you have any suggestions and anything related to React and Redux that you'd like to learn about. Um, and if you guys found value in this video, please consider uh, subscribing and leaving a comment below. It really helps the YouTube algorithm to help to get uh, videos out there. I'm not trying to sell anything. I'm just trying to put out some good content and share the knowledge I know about React and Redux. Um, and yeah, that's all. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.